So let's examine the structures of some monosaccharides. Shown below is the Fischer projection of D-galactose. Draw the Hayworth projection of beta-D-galactopyranose. The strategy we're going to employ here is to review the cyclization of glucose discussed in this section. What hydroxyl groups would be likely to contribute to a ring structure? Which hydroxyl groups would have to contribute to form a pyranose? And what do the designations beta and D tell you about this structure? So, shown here again is D-galactose. We know that this is a pyranose. And please recall that a pyranose is a six-membered ring. If this ring is going to have six members in it, we know that one of those members has to be an oxygen. Please recall that these structures are going to form either hemiacetals or hemiketals. In this case, we have an aldehyde, so we'll form a hemiacetal. If we form a hemiacetal and six, if one of those members has to be an oxygen, that means that five of them have to be carbons. And so the hydroxyl group that's important in forming the ring is going to be five carbons away. That means it's this hydroxyl group that will attack that carbonyl to form the hemiacetal. So that's one important piece of information we get. A second important piece of information we need to get from this Fischer projection is the position of those other hydroxyl groups around the ring. Please keep in mind that stereochemistry is critical in carbohydrates and what dictates and separates all carbohydrates from one another. So, we're going to retain the stereochemistry of each of these other stereocenters. So for example, the two, three, and four carbons. How would that translate to a Hayworth structure? The simplest way to think of it in this kind of depiction is to rotate that structure 90 degrees clockwise. So if we do that, then hydroxyl groups that are on the right will be found on the bottom half of the ring, and hydroxyl groups on the left will be found on the top half of the ring. We're also told that this is a D-galactose. The D designation comes from the stereochemistry around the penultimate carbon, and that's again the five carbon. Now, that won't change the position of the hydroxyl group that's on the five carbon because it won't exist anymore. It's going to be in the ring. Instead, what it will change is the position of the CH2OH group, as we're going to see in the next slide. So if we look at the solution here, we see that again, this hydroxyl group on the five carbon has formed this ring working through that anomeric carbon, the one carbon. If we wanted to number the carbons around the ring, we can do that. We see there's where our other five carbons are coming from. Again, this OH group is now that oxygen that's found in the ring. If we look at the stereochemistry of the two, three, and four positions, we see the OH group in the two position is on the right, and here it's going to be on the bottom face of that ring, the alpha face. The three and four positions are going to be on the left, and they're going to be on the top face of that ring, or the beta face. We're told this is beta-D-galactopyranose. This hydroxyl group is coming from this oxygen, the former aldehyde oxygen. When we're told this is the beta designation, it means the hydroxyl group is on that beta face, or top face of this ring. Keep in mind that, that structures like this can readily open and close, and so isomerization between the beta and alpha molecules will happen quite frequently. The last thing we want to describe here is the position of this CH2OH group. Because this is D-galactose, as dictated by the penultimate carbon here, the 5 carbon, it's going to drive the CH2OH group to the top face of the ring when this OH forms this cyclic form. So, our take-home points here. Monosaccharides contain both carbonyl and hydroxyl functional groups. These functional groups will interact with one another to form unstable hemiacetals and hemiketals. But by tethering both of these groups together in the same molecule, we greatly increase the likelihood of that hemiacetal and hemiketal formation, which is why we frequently see these carbohydrates drawn in Hayworth projections.